Uh, it is great to be back here in the building that Everett Case built, that Norm Sloan, David Thompson, Tommy Burleson, Monty Tao, and that 74 team made famous. A building, yeah, give it up for that. Items. A building where K. Yao set an incredibly high bar of success, integrity, and courage. And a building, yeah. And a building where our fearless leader, and yes, he was fearless, Jim Valvano, showed us all, and everyone watching, how ordinary people can do extraordinary things every day. Laughing, thinking, crying every step of the way. This is the building where we took down Michael Jordan and Dean Smith in 1983. And to this day, that is the loudest I have ever heard an arena get. And I've been in a few arenas. It's also the last time I saw an entire campus covered in toilet paper <laughs> and heard car horns blast the whole city until 2 a.m. This is where close to 30,000 crazy PAC fans welcomed us back from Albuquerque. We saw it up there a moment ago after they lined the highway and packed the overpasses all the way in. None of us had slept the night before, and I don't think anybody slept that night either. And on a personal note, this building, this is where I also met my future wife of 32 years, right downstairs in the weight room, right here. Lisa, stand up. Now be honest, be honest here. You're here at home, you can't lie. It was the Led Zeppelin t-shirt and the cut-off jeans that did it, right? It's a sexy look, man, back then. I know, I know you had it, Clark, back then. Um, this is where Coach V, right here, when he could barely walk and make it up the steps and onto the court, hugged every one of us, told us that he loved us, and then somehow found the energy and the strength to inspire all of us one more time. Everyone up here has his or her own unique story of how they arrived at NC State, but we all share one thing in common. It's here that our dreams were not just realized, but exceeded, shattered, made to look very small. We all grew up hoping to play college athletics in some way, but to be remembered and to be standing here tonight entering the Hall of Fame is beyond all realistic plans. We're here, we're part of something bigger than ourselves, and what made it so special while we were here in college was the passion of so many who supported us. You think it didn't help when they sent us tapes of the Brickyard bonfires that got bigger and crazier with every tournament win, and they did send us those tapes, and we watched them after every game. Or when 5,000 people showed up just to watch us practice, right here. And by the way, there is a school down the road that gets a lot of pub for students sleeping out in tents the night before games. Guess what? They were doing that here first. Yeah. And we were buying them pizzas and bringing it out there. We suited up every game thinking we could take on the world. And yes, the 83 team had an advantage. We had a coach, a shaman, who made us believe we could do anything. Some of us got carried away at times. I remember one game, and yes, it was against North Carolina, a certain guy named Michael started to go off, bucket after bucket, jumper, dunk. And I was on the bench at the time. And V, if you remember V, he never sat down. And he paced as soon as the opening tip went up. And he talked every single second from the time the opening tip went up. And he was going, yes, he did, George, didn't he? <laughs> yes. And he was saying, Oh, can't anybody stop this Michael Jordan guy? I gotta have somebody stop this Michael Jordan guy. And so I'm sitting there and I said, yeah, put me in, I'll stop him. <laughs> and without missing a beat, he turned around and said, Terry, that's Michael Jordan, not Hamilton Jordan. <laughs> but we won that game, we did stop him eventually. The fact is, I miss Jim Valvano every single day. And I miss Lorenzo Charles, and Quentin Leonard, Ed McLean, Vic Stewart, and Wright Wayne. 